Welcome to another exciting edition of Day 4 with the man Frank Scalish. We are here. <laughs> I wore the Shad Week shirt the other day, and I got a warm reception to it. A lot of people thought that was a fantastic shirt. I said, guess what? It was a one run only. I swear, dude. It you is- got it when you get it, and if you got it, you got it, and if you didn't, it will never return. For it fear will never of- return. Yes. <laughs> I wish they made hoodies out of it. Yeah, a, qu- a high quality hoodie. That's the only type of hoodie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. 100%. Back in the day, this man, he put on a cheap <laughs> hoodie and he said, Never again will I don a light cotton hoodie that shrinks after one. See, that's you. That's you after you threw a cheap hoodie into the water. Okay. Just I have it a, as it stinks. I have, I have a trivia question. Trivia for you, question for you okay. or for anybody. Well, for you. Okay. What coat is that that I am wearing in that photo? And I will tell you, it was insanely, insanely popular in the day. What coat? Yes. Frank, this picture was taken before I was born. It's quite possible. (laughs) (laughs) What, what, What year was this picture taken in? I don't know. You were totally born, dude. You were fishing, probably not not on the current what level. What coat was that? Was that a? a how many guesses do I get? Because I've got some guesses. Um, I'll give you. How you gotta many give me three guesses. You, okay, I want you three have, guesses. You have three. My first guesses. guess is going to be an LL Bean. No, it's industry related. It's industry related. Yeah. So, okay, so here's what I'll do. Every guess you, that you make. Every. Am guess I going to get this eventually? You're going to get it. You, I'm is it give the you... brand of the jacket or is it like what? No, what it's is not it? A, it's a jacket that a company offered in the industry back in the day. I will give you a hint every time you get one wrong. Okay. Uh, my next guest that a company offered back in the day. So this yes. was, this was it, pre Frank sponsored. Yes. They so, were very well known. They were very well known. Is it a, south bend jacket no it has to do with i'm gonna if i say it, if i say it you'll guess it. it it has to do with how am i gonna put this without giving the farm away it has to do with actually getting a fish in the boat a fray bill jacket no god they make it, nets it's a okay. Oh it wait, has, wait, wait, wait! Is it a Stren jacket? No, but oh, it's what's on it. the other end of the Stren. Is it a mustad jacket? Oh, so close, so close! It's, it's not, not a mustad, mustad jacket. Is it a hook jacket? You yeah, you are one hundred percent getting hot. Mu- is it a true turn jacket? Yes, yes. it's a true <laughs> turn jacket. Yes, a one hundred percent true turn jacket. Uh, dude, do you still have that thing? I, I showed this picture every. I can't hold it up. My arm's killing me anymore. It's. Too, I know it's too heavy. <laughs> That's a true. <laughs> the, the weight. The, the weight, weight of that. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever just tried to hold your arms out? Like it'll kill you. Oh uh, yeah, dude, it's brutal. That is a true turn jacket. One hundred percent true turn jacket. My buddy Troy and I, the guy that was on the show all the time with me from North Carolina. My buddy Troy and I, we each had one. And every oh, time every time I beautiful. Did, we wore that thing. And I, I don't know if what I did still it just have, have like it. a true turn patch with the yes. true turn hook underneath it? A hundred percent. That's all was on it. That's the only thing on it. It just said true turn and it had the, the hook in a patch. So when and, I first started logo. with the Assumption Bass Club when I was they illegally let me join the club before I was sixteen because of the casting kids thing. I said, ah. Just, they didn't know that I'd be the 14 year old that brought 11 rods and four tackle boxes. <laughs> Outstanding. And probably should have been medicated and wasn't. Um, so <laughs> it was, I thought, I thought when we did the random draw every morning and whoever drew me, I thought all the other guys were like excited that that guy got to fish with me. 
in hindsight, it was, ha ha, you got a fish with Pangrac. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. So what were you like, Jack Jack on the Incredibles? <laughs> I was I was just hyped up for this for this Saturday morning Assumption Bass Club tournaments. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I was just just a little keyed up on those. That is um, fantastic, dude. Where was I going with this? Okay, no. So uh there is a an, a gentleman named uh Harold who was who's a very good angler but as old school as they came okay. and he i talk about it all the time he the only thing he threw was it was a five eighths ounce chunk of lead and a black grape red glitter six inch paddle dale paddle tail producto worm he he fished the high viz gold uh stren yeah. 20 pound test and the abu 5600 and when everyone would pick that worm up, he'd hit the button on the side of the 5600 and he'd feed it to him old school, Harry and Charlie style, weighed in more dead bass than anyone in the club. <laughs> because <laughs> because he would rig that sucker on a true turn. <laughs> and, and then he'd give him the beans about 25 seconds after they picked it up. <laughs> and it was Never true. had a story about how he lost one. <laughs> like, no. That dude never broke off, never lost a fish, and rarely <laughs> weighed in in a live one. <laughs> the true That's turn it. to the gullet does the trick every single time. Oh, yeah, dude. And it's when it's in their throat, it ain't coming out. Oh, dude. The, it was truly turned into the stomach. Oh, yeah, that's horrible, man. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, before we get too far into oh. this recorded show, uh, I'm competing in day one of the Bassmaster Open. It's actually uh, t- what t- today's Tuesday, right? Yes. yes Tuesday night uh, that we're recording this. So I practiced today, practiced yesterday, practiced Sunday, then drove home. Uh, it's only like an hour and 10 minutes from where we're staying in Eufaula to, uh, to the BTL studio. But listen... Uh, there are some people that are, have made me painfully aware of my uh, open record this year. And I fully am aware that my living is not made in the tournaments. It's made through BTL. So here we are on the night of practice. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, and I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like this because from now until the rest of the season, all you're going to do is go for broke. Yeah. Because and, and that's how you win it. That's how you win a tournament. You go for broke. And so I think I think your chances of coming out really well are very good because you're not trying to stay alive. You're trying. Yeah, to- no, I have zero pressure. Zero pressure. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I love it. Zero expectations. Uh so but no, I've had a had a good couple of days of practice. So hopefully that'll translate into Tomorrow's half day of practice, and then we'll get the cat hooked up and dialed in and go Perfect. catch us five things. Uh, but I do want to bring this to the attention. Now, there are some four-letter words in here that I will leave out, so I won't really like, show the whole thing. But I do want to talk to you about this because it's it's pretty funny and something that I think we would both find amusing. Uh, let me share this screen here. So this this air uh, was on yesterday. You know what Barstool Sports is, right? Yes. Okay. So hold on, let me make sure right here. Share. Welcome to America. Fox decided to air Bassmaster Elite Fishing instead of some silly little European soccer match. (laughs) 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 So I can't show the rest of the articles, but I'll paraphrase it. We'll just go through this. This will make your this will make your day. So someone posted, just so we are aware, Fox. Sublicensed the game in the Euros to F to Fubo so that FS1 could air the Bassmaster Fishing Elite Series. What the actual heck? That's Eddie Mikas who posted that. Eddie Mikas clearly is not a red blooded American. He uh, clearly is. He clearly is not. So let me read you portions of this article if 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 you'd humor me. Are you interested in what Oh, this, uh, dude, this is going to be hilarious. This individual had to say Jordy wrote this. He's a a, a contributor to Barstool Sports. This is on barstoolsports.com. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I can read this without getting sued, right? I don't You're just reading what was publicly put out, so I don't see how you okay. can get sued for it. 
I don't want Portnoy after me. That guy doesn't seem like he backed down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a serious. I'm, I'm serious. I'm a big Portnoy fan, but I also know that when he gets a little perturbed, he'll he'll see it through to the end, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, definitely. Uh, he's got a new dog too, named Peaches, rescue dog. Anyway, excellent. Uh, Hopefully, if he does decide, he hears that part, and then he's like, "Oh, he knows about my dog." Let's That's right. He's, he's a uh, true follower, a true fan. So apparently, the Euros are going on right now. I have to make sure I don't read some of these words in here. Out of every sporting event to ever occur, it is arguably the least American possible. For starters, it's soccer. <laughs> <laughs> if football were steak and potatoes, soccer would be soccer would be the equivalent of lemon meringue enjoyable as a treat from time to time, but you'd be incredibly soft if it was all you ever consumed. Secondly, they don't even allow the USA to compete in the tournament it is because Europe <laughs> is butthurt over the fact that we have a thing called the world series, which only has 29 baseball teams from America and one team from Canada. <laughs> Still, it is so, cowardly to keep Americans out, considering how many times we've saved Europe in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta read some of these words in here. Anywho, Fox got stuck with the broadcasting rights for UEFA Euro 2024. Maybe some Europeans are currently visiting America on holiday or whatever the heck they call vacation. And they'll be flipping through the channels at 4 a.m. to watch soccer. Who gives a rat ass? Not America. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Ain't nothing more American in the summer than sitting on a lake, getting drunk, tossing in a chaw, and going to catch you some fish. So when Fox had the option between airing Bassmaster Elite Series fishing on FS1 or some European soccer match, they're going to go with Bassmaster fishing every day of the week. <laughs> so but apparently fun. that rubs some people the wrong way. This person said, Hungary, Switzerland in 42 minutes. Looking in is a lot different than what the Euros remember. It's a picture of Ray Hanselman throwing a Carolina rig. <laughs> On Wheeler Lake. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is so funny, dude. How did you find that? <laughs> he goes, if you're not someone who got upset that FS1 didn't have the Hungary versus Switzerland game airing, then you... oh, he goes, if you're someone who got upset that FS1 didn't have the Hungary versus Switzerland game airing, then you order salads for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> You look at your nails with the palms facing outward, and your favorite Ninja <laughs> Turtle was probably Donatello. You oh nerd. my god, that is so funny. Welcome to America. Don't like it? Then leave. <laughs> Here in America, we only reserve FS1 and FS2 for real sports like Bassmaster Fishing, Pickleball, and Pickle. Nick Wright stringing together the worst takes imaginable. Oh my god. If you want to watch European soccer so bad that go find some illegal stream that will fill your computer with more viruses than a Kesha concert. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's, oh That's my the whole god. article. That's so good. That's the whole <laughs> article. That is so good. At so many levels. That is so good. <laughs> I just <laughs> So More I was in the, I was practicing today <laughs> and Kyle oh. uh Kyle who's practicing with me it's like kind of come full circle so we go back to the assumption bass club so when I was 14 there's only one guy who was dumb enough to be like oh yeah he can fish with me all year and that was Darren Gates who then had a young kid named Kyle well now Kyle's like 30 years old and I'm fishing with him he's my co-angler that's full circle yeah, full circle. Yeah, that, uh, went, that went full circle. That's priceless. But anyway, oh. he uh, he was la he was snickering. He was sitting down snickering this morning, and I said, "What are you laughing at?" And he said, "Dude, this article is legendary. It is so funny that, and you know what's crazy? It's well written. Yes, yes, it's well written. Uh, it is written. Let's give uh, let's give Jordy 
the Philly blogger on hockey, lacrosse, and other nonsense, who is also, well, here, this is who wrote the article. Right there. This guy. Right here. All right. He, good for, good he, for he appears to be the type who would write an article like that. That's good. Good job out of you. He writes a lot of articles like this. That's good. Yep. But that might have been some of his finest work, Frank. Oh, that, that dude, that is so funny. Do you want to take a turn from that and go to something that is very serious and will cause much joy? Speaking of a, of a foreign nation. (laughs) 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 That didn't come out like I had hoped. No, it did not come out like you had hoped. Our friendly neighbors to the North, our allies, our friendly neighbors to the north, guys. Finally, finally, finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, almighty. <laughs> and yet we have stooped to another level. <laughs> to all my fine friends out in Canada, uh, LureNet now has Canadian shipping available. So you guys can finally get on there and get the stuff that you want. It took a little while, but it's done now. And if you go to the website, you could click on it. It's real self-explanatory, um, real easy. But uh, I'm so happy that uh, to see that it's finally, finally in order because it's been a long time coming. And if you feel slighted that you're no longer at a select club, if you're a American citizen, have no fear because Canadians still have to pay shipping even on orders over 35 but we get it free in the US <laughs> <laughs> oh just, man just one of the perks okay so uh, speaking about um, they get they get healthcare we get free orders on shipping over 30 exactly. <laughs> free shipping over 35 yes That's how it works so you're so you're when this show airs hopefully you're wrecking them um and you got well, no, oh. not wrecking them. Hopefully, so if this airs at eight thirty Central Time, so if we take off at six, I'm gonna hope I get a good boat draw. I'd like to have a limit by eight. Okay. So, so hopefully, I've got three rods on the deck. I've got eleven and a half pounds in the live one. I'm head hunt. All right, now I can I can live with that. So, so you're gonna take care of business on Thursday tomorrow. Um, I'm actually going to sneak out tomorrow for a little while. Where are you headed? I can't. Oh, you're probably not allowed. Yeah. You've never been able to stay on there anywhere you fish unless it's Lake Erie. Right. So it it won't be Lake Erie, but bass fishing, crappie fishing. Oh, bass fishing all the way, all the way. Yeah. I, um, they're starting to go where I want them to go up here. I like it. Yeah, and so th- when you were scrolling through LureNet and the Normans popped up, mm-hmm. um, that's exactly what I'll be throwing, actually. Do you uh, you want to see a quick picture? I do. This uh, Sometime in the last 48 hours, this occurred. Turn oh. it. Turn it. Uh, I, can't, I can't show it again. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, that is a literal giant. <laughs> that is a giant. We we do not have largemouth that big here. I wish we had more opens that were within an hour. Like regardless of whether I zero or weigh in a thirty rack. Which I mean, that's a joke. I I'd be thrilled with fourteen pounds, but uh, no, nah, you're gonna be thrilled with. Me. You're gonna weigh in Thursday. Is this gonna jink you if I give you a weigh in weight? No, I don't care. Now, okay, did, have you did you not see I finished a hundred sixty second at Santee Cooper and a hundred that uh wherever the hell I didn't even know the name of the lake we fished last. That's how okay. bad it was. Okay, so I am going to say tomorrow or Thursday. It's not fishing good. I would just like to point that out. Like it's okay. it's okay. tough. I'm going seventeen nine. Oh God. Okay, Frank, I'll take that. That's what I'm saying. I, I've got to write it down. Okay. Seventeen nine, because I I have faith. Okay, I appreciate I, that. I I don't know anything, but I have faith. Uh, 
all adult beverages are on me for show 200 if I weigh in within a pound of that, 18.9 to 16.9. You're in. You're on. You're on. I'm right. I'm writing it down in pen now, not pencil. I like it. And then, and so, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I've been working on um, new colors and new color schemes uh, yeah. for baits. And I, I'm on to something, a little something. And so I, I submitted three baits went in already. Um, I've got three more that I'm working on now. Two colors or baits, color. actual new bait. Well, okay. And, and, and baits. And I got a oh. new lure. Yeah. Ooh. Um, which I cannot even go near that conversation. Yeah, but, no, I, I won't. But the colors. So, um, I got, I sent the colors out, uh, to a core cohort and crime in the company. And he's, he sends me an e a text. He said, can't you, don't you ever just paint a real shitty color? And so I started laughing. I said, no, I can't because I'm a genius. And then he, he texts back. He goes, oh, that's right. I heard that somewhere before. So <laughs> that's the, uh, that's how the, the conversation went, but I'm really excited because these colors are really, they're really something else. Um, I get excited about a lot of things when I design stuff, but this was, um, th this was a real hard, uh, the way I designed these it was very difficult, but I figured it out and, and now I'm, now I'm going. And remember Matt, when I showed you this real quick picture right here, Matt, do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. That you wouldn't, yeah. That that is the whole th premise behind the colors. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So it has spawned into another series, which I'm excited about. I like it. Uh that kind of transitions into what I wanted to uh what we wanted to talk a little bit about tonight, which is time management on the water. And 100%. I've gotten uh two emails about this, the guys who want to hear your strategy on how you manage your time on the water, whether it's a fun fishing day. And then I had one guy uh, who actually fishes kayak tournaments who sent me an email and was like, man, ask Frank how you figure out how long you stay on a spot, how you put together uh, a game plan, how you, you know, I, I would venture to say, Heck, let's just keep this about the old school bass club. It was always first two hours, you top water if it was top water time, and then you kind of go, and then the last part, you go out deep and you drag and pray. Yeah, well, I yeah, but, I mean, but I'm just so so. I mean, that's kind of an open ended topic. But let's yeah. do this kind of warm weather season where you've where all of your options are in play, right? You've got they are. They shallow are. medium deep let's not do like a winter thing where your stuff is limited but no, specifically no, no. kind of around tournaments jackpots or one day how do you manage your time on the water and how do you develop a game plan especially if you've got a couple things going like how do you know what to go to first okay, and how so, long do you spend on it all right so i always go to my number one stuff first no matter what because that's got the best fish on it. That gives you the best opportunities to weigh in a good bag. If that doesn't pan out, all right? So let's, for example, say we're structure fishing. I will have my goal when I'm structure fishing, especially on a brand new body of water. My goal is to find three structural elements a day that have fish on them. Okay. And so what happens then is, okay, this is, this is where the breakdown starts. So in my practice time, I've established a depth. I've, ex I've established what kind of structure they want to be on. I find three a day. So if I have three days, I got nine spots. Okay. Now I take and I go, which, which one of those areas gave me the best fish or has the potential to give me the best fish. And I start there. Once I get to that point, all right, then I am going to either work my way 
back towards the weigh in or conversely if i'm in the middle of them then i'll after i leave there i'll run to my farthest away spot and start fishing my way back to the weigh in now the the key to, the key to structure fishing is really a couple of things when i find the fish i get you have to remember what angle you're casting at that they want it because the casting angle will be the determination whether you catch them or you don't so when i hit the structural element the first thing i'm going to do is take my highest percentage cast first okay. if that doesn't pan out i'm going to change my boat angles on it if that doesn't pan out i'm on to the next structural element because one of those structural elements is going to is going to tee off when you're there. And so I'll round robin them all day long. So if, let's say you practice for 3 days and you only found the minimum, then you've got 9 spots to run correct. and you're and and let me just make sure we're doing this. You're going to start on your spot that you think has the most potential combining quality and numbers quality first and then after that you're gonna run to your farthest spot away from take off to take and off, you're yeah. just gonna start working your way back Correct. hitting each one of those okay Correct. so now, now you're not just skipping spots and randomly haphazard now you no. know i'm starting on a then i'm gonna go to b and then i'm gonna work my way all the way back passing this Spot, most likely that you started on right but i will not pass it by the second time around i will hit it again yes okay, okay. so when i'm structure fishing and i know that the fish were using it i will not die on the spot if i don't get bit i will i will absolutely not i will make i will make critical casts i will spend you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes on it. If I catch one, I'm going to slow down and get more meticulous. If I don't catch them, I'm going to change my angles because if I catch one on a different angle, I got to refish it. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so I'm not going to waste time on it because with, with offshore structure, when you pull up on them and the fish are there, you catch them, or at yep. least you catch some of them. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a game of, I'm throwing a frog on a massive grass flat and I got to keep moving until I get a blow up. And then when I get the blow up, there should be other ones around it. So you're not covering monumental amounts of water. You're already dialed in on a key place. So you don't have to live and die there. The other thing I do is let's say I get through those and let's say I get through them all and I have a lot of time left in the day. Cause that happens sometimes. I'll go back to the ones where I might have caught only one or two and go back and recheck them to see if the fish are firing. But I also will go to places that I never fished before. And I will try to find more and new fish because that also has happened to me countless times where some of the places that I found, I might have only caught fish off of one. And then by the time I run them all, I still have a half a day left. And then I go out and pre-fish, basically, during the tournament. And some of those tournaments have been my best tournaments. Mm -hmm. It's the ones where I'm just winging it all day, you know, just going out. And I know if once you know and establish the depth you need to be in, that's, that's a lot of the battle. So how do you determine what your best spot is without burning all your fish, Frank? Because in order to figure out how right. many and how big they are, don't you have to catch numerous and a big one? Well, what happens is what I found with structure fishing usually is if it's holding big fish, usually the first one you catch is a good one. And so then you always, I always watch the fish, especially if the water's clean. I watch the fish as I'm fighting them in because you'll have a tendency to pull that whole school or a lot of that school mm -hmm. with that fish and you could see them running it down. And if I see multiples, I'm out. I don't even make another cast. I might side image it or, or uh, 2d sonar it to find every little nook and cranny on it before I leave, but I'm not making another cast there. Um, mm -hmm. I, I usually try to only catch one fish 
just for a size check. I, I'm not going to burn it up because offshore structure usually has more than one bass on it. Now, you got to be careful about that because if you're fishing a stump, there might only be one on the stump. But with today, with forward-facing sonar, you'll you see, see that. You'll see it. Um, we're mm -hmm. back in the old days. You couldn't see that. Um, you know what I mean? So you just be casting it all one stumper thinking that there might be three or four more down there. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, like Frankie and I fished an offshore, um, place that I found, um, on this lake and I don't even know how many we caught off of it. It was just nonstop. It was relentless. And the first day I found it. I was throwing a fat free shad and I wound up catching four off of it on the fat free and then couldn't catch any more cranking. And so we wound up turning around, going through it with Carolina rigs and football jigs and then did the damage. So, so they just weren't keying in on the crankbait good enough, but mm -hmm. the first four that came off of it came on the crank. So that showed me there was way more than four fish there. And that, you know, yeah. So you're rotating baits before you leave an area. You're never, especially in a tournament situation on an, a, a structure spot that you think has a population of fish on it. You're never just going to throw one bait and leave. No, you can't, you can't do that because if it's all predicated on the mood of the fish like here. Okay. So, so the, the truth of the matter is, is that when I found the place, um, I found it side scanning a year ago and I've never been able to fish there in the, in the, when they got offshore, I never was able to fish there. I found, I actually found it uh crappie fishing. And so, okay. so what happened was I went finally, because the spawns over, things are settling down. I just wanted to see and um, what was on it. And, and the, the first day that we fished it, you know, it proved worthy. Okay. okay. Uh, this, the, we went back to it later and started chucking football jigs on it. And I, like I said, I don't know how many we caught. We just kept catching them. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the nature of it. And the, and the crazy thing is the bite zone was small. The, the main key ingredient on this ledge was small. It was rock but it was a small area. And so because of, because of forward facing sonar, um, we just started scanning around and we could see the school moving from one end of it to the other end of it, from one end to the other end. And so, so you have to realize with you, the technology that you have today. Now those fish moved 30 yards. As soon as we caught a couple, they moved 30 yards. Then we catch a couple, they go right back to where they were. 30 yards away and mm -hmm. so so with with this we weren't scoping them scoping them mm -hmm. but we could see which end of the structure they were on and then we would cast accordingly and we sat there and just waylaid them and um but that's that's kind of offshore -y. i'll tell you a tournament yeah. story offshore tournament story so it was on a local lake it was a, a, a local tournament uh team trail called aba Yep. I had American bass anglers. I wanted one of them dang eagle heads so bad. And I've got second in the freaking regional and second in a tournament. And I still haven't got an eagle head. I'm sorry for that, Matt. And but then Travis Manson's like, you have an eagle head. You have an eagle head. He wins all the eagle heads. <laughs> Jody White wins all the eagle head. They just got walls of eagle heads. Did they give yeah. out the eagle heads when you were fishing them? No, no. We just got a We got a plaque with okay. a bass jumping out of it. So I don't have an eagle head either. So anyway, here's the story. So we, I got on all these structure fish. All of them were Carolina rig fish. And, and, and so we set up the, we set up our milk run and we started running it. And, and literally every time we stopped the boat, we caught them, but we weren't catching big ones. The, 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 the tournament winning fish were not coming in the boat. We were catching piles of fish and they weren't the right ones. So we had probably 15 minutes to go in the tournament. And I said, dude, we got to run back to the good spot 
we're only going to have 15 minutes to fish it. We got to run back to the good spot. So we run back there. I cast the rig out. I, I feel the break. I feel the rocks. I feel the wood on the break. And I don't get bit. And I'm reeling that Carolina rig in. I'm like, boom, burning it in 100 miles an hour. And there's a three and a half, four pounder running the Carolina rig down. So I kill the rig. The fish didn't go down on the rig. When I reeled it in, I killed it and let it fall a little bit. The fish didn't go for it. I grabbed my crankbait rod. I fired a crankbait out there. Whack. First cast, I got one. So I, I get them in. We call. I make another cast. Get another one. Call. I do that five times in a row. Call all five fish. I go, we got to go. We're done. We're out of time. All we because go. you saw one chase here. Carolina all rig. because i saw one chase the carolina rig in and here we won the damn tournament we we literally won the tournament and i'm gonna say we won it in 15 minutes but that's not really the truth it took it took a long time to, to, to throughout that day but the point is if i would have died on one spot i may never have been able to get back to that place and so you gotta pay attention to your time when you're structure fishing unless it's a you know, a mile long ledge where you're picking mm -hmm. up one here and one there. Usually the the fish on the structure are confined. It's, it's no different than finding grass in a, a bass in a grass bed. They're not everywhere in the grass bed. Usually when you find, you get a bite, you get multiple bites within the same area in that grass bed. So it's the same, same kind of deal. There you go. There you go. Well, I think, I think that kind of helps. I like that strategy. It at least gives you, if you just follow that strategy, start on your best spot, then run to the farthest spot, and then fish them all back with a number of different ones, pay attention to the angles. That gives you it, a reasonable strategy for the duration of the day. And you're efficient. You're being efficient. Now, if something else happens or something catches your attention, you do it, you how many times have you gone off off pattern where you're like, I mean, that's when you're fishing good, when you're making game day decisions where you're, you know, I've done, you're that. not saying, Hey, I have to fish all these spots today. Right. I've done that a few times where something changed. Yeah. It was always a change. And usually it was a weather change or a wind difference change where the wind might have stalled the current and the fish vacated or they back then I didn't know what they did. Cause we didn't have, we couldn't scope back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just red bass master. Right. So, so, you know, we used to think they left. But they didn't leave. When I they found used to out, have articles that are just like, hey, fish don't eat for this month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, oh, they don't travel in on channels. <laughs> they don't eat in the winter. Their mouths are, their teeth get soft. They don't eat the po post spots brutal. But yeah, so, so, you know, so yeah, there are times when you do that, but the conditions will dictate it. Um, it's never, it's never a random guess. Um, and the, and the more you fish, the more you'll recognize things. And your decision making becomes like turning the turn signal on in your car. You don't have to think, oh, I'm making a left turn. Let me hit the left turn signal. You, you don't have to think that anymore. You just do it without thinking about it. Well, when you're making decisions on the water like that, you're usually fishing well. You're fishing really well. I've been looking for one of these freaking ABA Eagle Head trophies. There's not one on the internet. I wanted to show... <laughs> I wanted to show you this trophy that I have been questing at. Now I haven't fished ABAs for a number of years, but I went after it pretty hard. I came within a pound. I got Arkansas rivered by an aluminum boat. Outstanding. I you ran down. I ran down, made an hour and 20 minute run, found an offshore shell bar, caught him cranking a flat side custom balsa and a drop shot on the Arkansas river. Came back. <laughs> Dude freaking got in a hole. You had to have an aluminum boat to be in a mile from the launch ramp. Beat me by a pound. <laughs> yeah. Most, Ar most Arkansas river way to lose ever. Oh yeah. That's, that's an Ohio river way to lose too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's why my old bass boats used to be scraped and marred from one end to the other. There wasn't a concrete, there wasn't a concrete spillway or a, or a tube. I didn't try to get through or over. <laughs> <laughs> love it 
Yeah, this 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 your photo doesn't exist. A lot of people have won ABA's holding up fish. I wish they'd show a picture of them holding up the eagle head trophy. Yeah, I don't I, I don't believe mine have eagle heads on them. Oh, it's all good. I I don't believe that, but I got a lot of them from ABA. But I, I just don't I don't ever remember the eagle. Must have been after I fished them. Yeah. When oh, just a little fish. just a little deal. You know, like like the you can see it up there, the FLW ones. There are a lot of guys like love to collect those. Got it. But the the top six top sixes. I've only got one. I got a second. That was That's on Ufala. That was a twenty one pound sack on Ufala. But uh ooh. Ooh. ooh, actually, no, I've got a couple. One I don't have up there. Uh yeah, I should have ran downstairs and ripped open the box and looked through those. I wonder if there is an eagle in there. Is the whole trophy an eagle or is yeah, it the, the whole it's just the trophy is it like an eagle head? Okay, no, I don't have that. Ours ours were rectangular, like brass engraved, you know, winner. Yeah, of, but it was it was a straight square. This actually yeah. was like, yeah, no, this was like a art, like it's something that like if your wife doesn't let you put fish and stuff in the house, she'd let you put that in the house because it it's an eagle. Yeah. It's an eagle. Yeah, no, I don't have an eagle, unfortunately. No eagles for me. What else you got, Frank? That's it, man. That's it. Don't you have to do go live now? Yeah, well, this is Tuesday. This will air Thursday, so it'll have been live for two days. Perfect. We're doing that. Uh, Stefan and I are doing that master angler challenge. Have I told you about this? No. We're... Oh yeah, you did tell me. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. yeah, you, yeah. You, you, anyway, look. we're trying to we're we're spending ten days in October, immediately after the U.S. Open. Um, and we're trying to catch all twenty eight species on the In Fisherman Master Angler list that are master angler size. Oh, sweet dude! It is sweet, except uh, today I put a largemouth in the boat that was hefty and i have a 25 inch bump board in the boat and so i was like oh i want to see if i just caught a master angler award fish and it was it was a fish that you catch very rarely let's just say that and even in the state of oklahoma and it had to be 24 inches and this thing was 22 and a half inches so it still just to qualify for a master angler would have had to be another inch and a half longer which could theoretically not have weighed as much as the fish you caught yeah i i mean i mean if you're if they go by length i mean theoretically it's length or weight because you have like a kept weight and a catch and release weight but a freaking 24 inch largemouth is a gargantuan oh it's a big largemouth dude like i got a 22 inch one on the wall that weighed nine four out of illinois Man. And it has to be 24 inches down here. And the one I caught today maybe touched eight. And it was still an inch and a half short. Wow. So do what so what so so placate the dummy over here. So do they have master anglers for each state? Yeah, hold on a second. Okay, I, I get it. Because I because I'm gonna say you can't dude. You can't, I wanted to do that was fun that didn't involve controversy and tournament fishing and this just came about organically and like you're like me and matt stefan's the same way we just love to catch a damn fish and we don't care what species it is like oh, if, there's a, yeah. if there's a bar that comes up and it's not like crunch time in the last hour of the tournament i'm putting whatever i'm holding in front of that thing to see if it snaps at it oh yeah that dude that's how i caught my first alligator gar yeah I saw it swimming around and I said, holy shit, I got to catch that. Yeah. And I will not make an apology for that. No. And so I did. <laughs> exactly. I was in a tournament on, I was in a Bassmaster event on Lake Murray and um, the stripers came up schooling around me. So I picked up my big spook and I started catching stripers and Alton Jones runs by and he swings around. He comes up to me and, and this is during the tournament. He goes, Hey, Frank, I go, what's up, dude? And I'm and I'm locked and loaded on one. I go, what's up, dude? He goes, you know those don't count. 
<laughs> I said, yeah, <laughs> I know. I said, but how do you pass it up for crying out loud? You know yeah, what I mean? No joke. You can't pass that up for nothing. <laughs> that's just how that's just the fisherman in me, man. I just like catching them. If they have fins and eyeballs, I want to catch yeah, them. I'll find the in fisherman website right now. Everything I'm finding is old. What the heck? Yeah, I'll look it up later. I can do it. I know what I'm doing. It's like, yeah, it's like different uh, regions. Yeah, so they have to do that because there's n- there's no way somebody up north is going to compete, especially in the largemouth category. Um, with Texas. Com. What am I looking for? Master Angler. Master Angler. But it might just give you everybody who's already, you know, sent sent stuff in. You gotta you gotta watch that. No, I, I don't know why I can't like find just the okay, I'm at home. There's the latest articles. So okay, so you're just doing this around where you live. No, this is coast to coast, world nationwide, including Canada. We're sparing no expenses, spending okay. 10 days 24-7 with a film crew trying to catch all 28 species of master angler length. Oh my gosh! What a ball bust, dude! Yeah. What was the? Why was it the ten day predication? Who who made Matt's, that up? Well, I mean, Matt Stefan has a family, and like we established earlier, I have to do a podcast to make a living. So. Oh yeah, that's a that's a fact. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I I let my fishing get carried away. <laughs> I'd be like all in on that. Oh, oh, oh wait a second! I might have just been a I might have been a dumbass. All right, here we go. I found it. All right. People are going to get sick of hearing about this. Okay, I, I, I'm tracking. So here's the regions. Great Lakes and tributaries, interior Canada and Alaska, all coastal waters and estuaries in Region 6. Region 3 is Western United States. And Mexico, Region 2 is Texas to Florida, up to Kentucky and uh uh virginia gotcha are so you impressed you got, i knew all the names of those states just by the yeah shape? i am very impressed and then region one is the midwest from uh nebraska to the dakotas all the way up to maine down to uh west virginia and kansas is also uh in that region so you have to pick you have so, to theoretically yes. you have to pick in what region is going to give you you pick the state, the lake, the area of what region is going to give you the best of what you have to go for. Right. So like a largemouth bass in region one, like your region, Frank. Yes. Uh, or region five, which is the same. A largemouth bass must be six and a half pounds kept or 22 inches in length, which a 22 incher in your neck. So this is where it's a little wonky. I don't know how they came up with this, but like a six and a half pounder is a 22 incher in Ohio is going to be a 10 pounder unless it's like emaciated. Correct. Because it, it'd be a Northern strain and they, yeah. they grow well, out not long. Th- that's right. The Northern strain grow fat. They don't get length. Right. But, but a, a six but and a six half and pounder and is going to be like not 20, 20 inches. Yeah. It's, it's a six and a half pounder is doable. Yeah. So, what we're going to, and we have to get Thomas Allen on. We want to see if we can, if they'll verify a kept six and a half pounder, even if we end up releasing it, if it's on a verified scale. Gotcha. Yeah. Because you what, it. you know, because uh, like what Matt Stefan said, which I'm sure he doesn't want me to repeat is, hey, if we got to keep the thing, I'll knock the sides off an eight pound largemouth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. And have no shame about it. He goes, but I don't think that's a great look. So it's he goes, not. we would like to get a verified scale to where we could, you know, it would count for the cat, like it would win officially. And then you like fill out the award certificate and all this stuff. There's an entry, the date caught everything, how you caught it, the whole nine yards. But here's where it gets wild. There's 28 species. 
And each one is of the master angler length. And we're going to try to catch all 28 using our contacts, our information. We're going to try to get sponsors to cover our travel. We're going to planes, trains, and automobiles. We're going to fish out of our boats. We're going to utilize guides, other professional anglers, okay, BTL so, fans, Matt Stett, like everything. So 38-inch hybrid muskie. Yeah. Which is a tiger muskie. Yeah. When are you doing this? Uh, the uh, close to the. This is the other thing. Sorry, I've yawned. I've been practicing. Daylight to do. You tell them I'll windburn. Um, or heat stroke. <laughs> I'm fishing the Bass Nation Regional on Lake Champlain in July to qualify for the Bass Nation National Championship on Grand the first week of November. So gotcha. if I make if I make that, then we'd have to push it earlier. If I don't make that, then we're doing it like October twenty first through like the thirtieth. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. So. Okay. Is that doable? No. Yeah. No, it's not. But we're gonna try. Well, you're gonna have you're gonna have issues with kings and cohos because you got to no. be around when they're running. Oh no, you could go out on a boat and catch them. Yeah, we're doing, and I've got the hookup on that, so we're gonna have issues with this right here. Brook trout. Oh, yeah. flats. That time of year. Ah, that's a big ass flathead. Yeah, and we're also gonna have issues. With that, that's a gigantic channel catfish. Yes. Uh, the other thing is, I don't even know what the hell the difference is between a saw guy and a sauger. So we're going to have to find like the one saw guy specialist in the country. Yeah. So a saw guy is like a cross between a walleye and a sauger. We have a couple lakes here that have them, but I'm not sure you're going to get the master angler one. Where's the size on that? 25 incher or a six pounder. That's a gigantic saw guy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's big it for is. a walleye. It is. So and and even even your sauger's pretty big for a yeah. sauger because they don't run they sauger don't run nearly as big as walleye do. But here's what's wild in region two, a walleye still has to be 10 pounds. Dude, I never heard of a freaking wall, a 10 pound walleye caught in any of those states in region two ever. Yeah, I don't know. Oklahoma, Greer's, Texas, where's, Arkansas, where's Louisiana? Greer's Ferry? Where's Greer's Ferry at? Arkansas. I think that I think the, one of the, the biggest walleyes ever caught was in Greer's. It was. I'm just cartoon. saying, there's not many states in that region that you can catch a 30 inch no, walleye. No. What's the What's the uh, region? Region, region one. Five is the Great Low. Region one. No. Yeah. Region five is all Great Lakes. Yeah. So okay. five, That's the old it. walleye has to be the exact same. It's 10, 10 pounds, 30 inches across the board. Yeah, you could do that on Erie. Anyway, there's a bunch of this stuff on this, so that's what we're going to talk about. That's pretty interesting. So you can go back and listen to the show from uh, the Tuesday Night Live show if you want to have more of that. Perfect. <clears throat> it could get cool. a little interesting because I'm going to be slap happy by the time we're done with that. Oh yeah, dude! I had a grass carp on my fly rod that was like a Mugambo. Oh, dude! It broke water three times and before I finally lost them. So a a carp, common or grass. So like, here's the other thing: the every grass carp I've ever hooked has been hooked like in the freaking dorsal fin or tail on like a one point five. No, nah, dude, I caught them. They were the this pond had grass carp in it, and I had my fly rod with me, and they were eating the cotton seed bloom yeah so i had a i had a marabou streamer and i ratted up all the marabou and i i cut the lead eyes off of it ratted up all the marabou i saw one coming up to get cloop on the <clears throat> cotton seed i laid that thing out there it ate my fly i set up on them and i i didn't realize grass carp jump um i set I up either. on them i loaded up I've on them snagged them and unintentionally you do that thing came out of the water five feet and he did it three times. 
and he and he took he practically spooled my fly rod, and then he finally breached one more time, and I lost him. I was I was like obsessed. I was obsessed. I went back to that place so many more trying times to after catch a that. Carp. Yeah, trying to catch a grass carp. <laughs> but it's really anyway. Fun. That's my new quest. I'm going to do a bunch of shows on it. We're going to basically do a live brainstorm session as it approaches, and then Adam Bartuzek from the Crappie Chronicles is going to join us and document it and do a video series on it. That's fabulous. That is absolutely fabulous. I actually wish I would have thought of that. I'm happy. I mean, you. dude, we need to freaking, we need to get LureNet on the line and Pradco, and we need to, you know, kind of badger them in, into making us do more in-person, on-the-water content. I'm, I'm totally down for that. Let's do that. Let's, that's going to be our goal for this year. Like, I think in 2025, in 2025, we should do six on the water shows and an entire week of in person shows where we're in the same place. Cause you've been in the studio in Shawnee and I've been in the, your studio in Cleveland. And then I'm we've been totally. on the water a bunch, but I think that should be, uh, that should be our goal. I'm totally down with that. Hey, to close this hey. show, yes, I just sir. want everyone to remember our brothers up north. We now have Canadian shipping at LureNet. And Matt, let the badgering begin. <laughs> and since you can order in Canada, the code is now applicable. That's right. BT Capital BTL 24. On LureNet.com to get 15% off and also let people know that you support BTL. <clears throat> Amen. All right, Frank. I think that's all we got for today. Next week, Thursday, June 27th, we'll be live, right? Uh, let's see when that is. That is the 27th. See, I got my calendar on the wall there. You doing anything at around uh, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central? A.M.? Just our show. Yeah. Okay. We're good. We're we'll good. see you then. We, will, we, we might have a guest on the show. Okay. A I'm pre I, A pre-iCast display. Some new lures coming out. Or we may save that. For the when's I, when's ICAST? ICAST is the 16th through the 19th. Of July. Of July. Oh, we and I will be it. out of town on the 11th, so I feel like the 11th or the 6th, I feel like the 11th or the 16th would be a great, probably the 11th would be a great, uh, great time for that show. Perfect. I will let the powers to be know. Okay. You, you guys are going to like it. All right, this has been another edition of Day 4 with the man, Frank Scalish. Same place, same time next week. See you, Frank. Calendar. Adios.